I drink milk with everything. Well, no matter what I'm eating, it has to be chocolate milk, though. Chocolate? Okay, chocolate yeah. milk, I can feel. Because I can chug, and I will chug, like, um, like just regular milk. I'm, 50 likes, we'll have a video of her chugging. <laughs> I will chug milk for, for but if I want to enjoy milk, I add chocolate to it. What kind of chocolate do you add? That's my question. Nesquik. Nesquik. Yes. This is the only, oh, only no, thing Oh, no, Nesquik I chocolate. But the powder, not Ooh. the syrup. This powder is... Nah, I had a powder since I was like a young and young. I, keep, I keep that shit on me at all times, whether all I have time, milk baby. or not. Yeah, it's time to solve my try for the night. Yeah, for the night. Yeah, for the night. Yeah, she looking bad and the vibes feeling right. I'm over to talking like the interview started. No, it is, yeah, it's already started. It's going. This is great. This is awesome. Nice. I think more people should do vlogs, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, like, with all the stuff that a lot of us do, you know, where it's making music videos, going to shows, just making music in general, or, like, our day-to-day -day lives, like, um, I just think more people should do it. Yeah. You know how easy that would be? It would be, like, <laughs> you get to see a whole different kind of recap, and then you have, like, your own little YouTube channel, like, uh... Do you know how much of money those people make on YouTube? Well, they make... <laughs> like, I've seen... I've met some people that have made big money and let me tell you they always use different kind of platforms to youtube instagram and like it's just so crazy it is ridiculous just Sounds like ridiculous. off of like a they just like millions of dollars off of views from one video you know what yeah, I mean? that's all it takes per video like that nigga mr beast not playing like, oh my lord bro that nigga be dropping like 10 mil five mil on the music and like, on the video from the music video but like bro come back like this man definitely make the most he money made it back like, when bro be spending the least amount of money is when he gets the most like views especially when he do like the survival shit like bro i've seen some his survival shit that shit get like damn near a uh, fucking close to a billion views i'm like yo that is crazy you know how much of that's one eighth of the population it just blows my mind every time to like learn more more about like youtubers because i'm just like it could be so simple yeah, people say like like a lot of things that I see is like this algorithm based on how you put like your thumbnails and then how you say your uh, like uh, the title. Yeah. Yeah, like things like that is the eye catching things and then how you like the thumbnail especially. No one's gonna wanna watch a lame thumbnail. If you have a thumbnail with like in a music video, if you don't if you see like Ice Spice in the in the thumbnail and it's not Ice Spice, you're gonna be like, Oh, yeah, I clicked on it but you click that. uh yeah. what's the word called? Clickbait. Clickbait, that is Clickbait. the correct terminology right there. I think that's like my like I mean that just kind of goes back into like the way you the way you promote right yeah um is that like something that you like are conscious of on like how you're promoting it and learn like like what are your what are your techniques when it comes to promoting your stuff so now I'm more conscious but when I first started releasing music like I'd say maybe like before summer began I wasn't really intentionally promoting my music I was just kind of like I was like okay I was song when I released, someone like kind of put a reel out there or something like that, and like there, you, you, I promoted it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, like for the night, the music video just dropped like last week. So, for promoting that, I was trying to go every, like one reel a day and kept posting a story, kept sharing, kept adding people. And you know, it's got over like 100 views in like less than a week. So, we're really proud of that because yeah. most of our songs hit like a couple hundred, you know. So, when we have that like in less than a week, that that's just like yeah, major, really major amazing. progress. That's awesome. How do you come up with the different ideas for these reels? It just depends on what I'm, what kind of song, what I have. Like for, I have like a couple songs that I have like that are heartbreaks I that I made off band lab. You know, it's kind of like my demo songs, songs I want to release, but they're not ready yet. So I'll like make a reel for it. Like mm -hmm. I made this one song. This is a artist named Katana that I know. Where's my phone? So I can get this. <laughs> and I made a reel from it. And people tell me like, yo, that is a crazy ass reel because of the lyrics I said. And you know, I, I gotta say, like you know, I was kind of, I was kind of well with the lyrics. And where's the real one? Yeah, and I kind of clickbaited to him. Be honest, I, <laughs> I, I, I had a line with Ice Spice. And I kind of threw an Ice Spice picture in there, so it looked like something that would pop off eventually. But you know, it's like this. Okay. Wait. Yep. Headphones, up. headphones on my bed. <laughs> That, I can't tell you how much flack I got for that bar. 
the Tell child me. support bar. Oh my goodness. Everyone was Tell like, me Yo, about what it. the Tell fuck? Tell me about it. Tell me about it. <laughs> the nice curly top getting mad? Oh lord. There's a def- there's definitely a different sound. Yeah, than- I'm not really aggressive type of person. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah. But you know, I have my moments. I was raised in a you know, not the best neighborhood and born in Brooklyn naturally. I just have that you know, when they get when it's time to get serious, I don't get mad often, but when I get mad my voice changes, like my whole demeanor changes. I like, ain't growing up, I was like an athlete, I played football a lot, so I'm I'm used to getting hit from like six five, yeah. three hundred pounds, you know. So I'd be like, Come on, like shit, my bad. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry with the mic. <laughs> Yeah, it's got a moment, but <laughs> my bad. He's like, come on, wait. Yeah, it's like, it's just mentality. Like, when you're ready to do something, it's like, I don't, I don't like jumping all in unless I'm ready to go all in. When I say, fuck it, I'm all in, that's that. There's no second guessing. There's no tripping. If I fuck up, it just keep rolling with it. That's mm-hmm. it. That's mm-hmm. it. You said, you know, you haven't, you're not really the aggressive type, but like, you know, like, um, how you grow up definitely shapes in who you are right but you're just naturally like this yeah um yeah this sweetheart you Thank know what you. i mean <laughs> like you're just naturally really nice really outgoing it's a it's a it's not difficult but it's always challenging to constantly mm-hmm. make sure you're always in a positive mindset because sometimes you know i'm very positive and sometimes it gets sad sometimes you get depressed yeah you know you always always like on a daily basis you always got to pick and choose what kind of person you want to be mm-hmm. how do you how do you work through through that like through that sadness through that heartbreak through even through that anger to be this positive person um music so far my biggest you know outlet and you know it's got me like a lot of better days that when like, i'm just chilling at home or you know taking a break from shit and just like that i can feel like pulled through this massive depression where i just feel so like mm-hmm. sad suicidal like real quickly to go like man what's the point of everything yeah. and when those moments come you know, sometimes I just sit there, just let it eat me alive, and I'll get up and make make a song. I'll, I'll I'll freestyle the song. There's some songs that like I'll make because I did some things that you want to alleviate my heart. I'm like I want to fall in love again. I want to mm-hmm. feel this feelings of life again. You know, I've gone to a very cold place in life where I've learned not to give many cares to others' opinions, and unfortunately, that's just how it is. I love family, I love my friends, but it's at the same time if I'm not happy with my decision, it's on me. So I gotta make my decision, no matter what they say. I'll ask for opinions and enough what if I, input if I need it. But other than that, it's my decision. Mm-hmm. You know. Have you always been like that, or has it taken you some time to grow into that? It definitely takes some time because mm-hmm. I used to be the type of person that listened to everybody, mm-hmm. do everybody's way. Mm-hmm. Must be icy. It's like like I said, I'm, no one really knows how deep me me and his like friendship is. But like when I say he's my brother, dog, that is like legit, like my flesh and blood. I would do anything for that man. Pause. No homo. <laughs> you gonna look at it? You be like, yo, that was kind of gay. <laughs> no, but like, he's. I've learned so much. He's guided me through a lot of bullshit that I've gone through, and he's always looked out for me in a sense. Like, yeah. no one will take care of you, but yourself. Mm-hmm. And he's always told me to put my head on straight. You know, I'm always the happy go lucky guy, but don't be a fool either. That's awesome. Shout out, must be icy. Must be icy. I love you, bro. <laughs> How's your mama doing? Mama Top. Oh, Mama Lord. Top. Shout out Mama Top. Mama Top. Mama Top right now, she's doing really well for herself. Last time we had a conversation, we were in the best financial spot. Now, she's taking care of everything right now. She's paying all the bills. She's paying for my car to get fixed. That's just, that's how Mama that. Top is. Yeah. Mama's rolling right now. I love that for her. She's she's very, she's awesome. If you've never met Mama Top, like, if you ever have the pleasure to meet her. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mama Top is definitely Mama Top. Mm-hmm. She's a loving, caring person. Well, let me tell you, she will not take no flack either. Nothing from me. <laughs> Love it enough. Golly, she will get on my ass for crazy shit. <laughs> Love it though. Um, how would you? So you have like a a lot of different like styles of music. You yeah. Know, obviously, like you have some that are really sad. You have some that are really like energetic. Um, how would you describe your sound? My sound. Mm-hmm. I feel like my sound is curly top. That's it. I don't have a specific okay. person that I try to replicate. You know, mm-hmm. I'm like a mix of like. Uzi, Juice, Andy, or Killer Roy, and you know I have like my little Eminem moments because I like I love Eminem. Eminem is like my favorite. I've heard you freestyle. J Cole, <laughs> like, like, like freestyle is like I always go to like more lyrical, fast paced kind of like freestyle. It's not my, it's not like the best shit ever, but you know I definitely if you tell me to come on something like on the spot. I used to be able to. Yeah, yeah you're a quick so. picker. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Is there like a theme or message within your music that you like to always kind of carry with you? Each song has its own story. Okay. Definitely that. Each song has a different background where it came from. 
and thoughts that originated that. When I heard it, might hear a beat, I can hear my story. I can hear something coming from that. Mm -hmm. I'll think of a hook and why I want to make that hook. One of my biggest things that what takes me so long to write songs versus like freestyling them is what's the purpose of the song? Okay. It's always like the biggest question. Yeah. Is that like something? Is that something you've always done, or is that just? Uh, for music, yeah. Yeah. Uh, most of the songs, like for the night, um, I heard the beat and I was like, why would I want to make a song like this? And you know. It's okay to have your little like phases when you know you gotta take care of some business and business coming at you. If you wanna have a little fun for the night, nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? It's not guaranteed that you'll be happy later on. What happens or you know, you catch a bump, that's not that's that's on you, but that's so like you should've <laughs> should've double checked and paid attention. No, but like you you're entitled to have some fun, especially in the young age that we are. How do you carry that on into like let's say like your reels or like a music video? Um, I like showing my energy. My energy is a big, big like it's the best thing I can give off in anything that I do. Because, mm-hmm. like, in my mind, music is 100% everything to me. It's music, if I'm not 100% in it, I'd rather be dead. Or I would be dead. One of the two. Um, so what motivates you to continue to push harder in this industry? Because this industry is not... It doesn't always play fair. doesn't always play nice. Um... You know, especially when meeting a bunch of people who are all after the same thing. How do you how do you continue to push harder and just continue to make music? Um, my thing is, you know, I look at people that are great musicians like Calamari. Uh, he's out here doing some phenomenal shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I see Quest, you know, 100 Carat, of course, you know. But at the same time, some people are trying to make a record label. Some people are trying to make something from scratch, be independent. And I look at them and I see that they're going to continue pushing regardless. And I need to do the same. Mm-hmm. I love everybody. And regardless, I feel like we're all going to find our own way of fame. We're all, we're all find a spot where we want to stop at. Mm-hmm. And it just depends on where you want to stop at. You know, mm-hmm. it just depends on how fast, how much, how, <laughs> it's okay. how fast, how long mm-hmm. you'll push. You know, I'm going to push until I make it where I want to be. My mm-hmm. goal is to buy my mama a house, buy my mama top of a house. That is the end goal, be all. After I'm able to do that, I want to continue spreading my music across the world. Like, mm-hmm. I want to be global where I can, I don't want to be able to go to H-E-B without being stop by paparazzi like that's how genuine, <laughs> like that's how i want to be life at not the best idea but you know, that is that is that's that's something i want i see myself in now yeah that's awesome shout out h-e-b man h-e-b I love sponsorship H-E-B. sponsorship yeah. h-e-b i'm saying make a song h-e-b you know get food for you and me no i'm, saying. Hey. <laughs> I'm just saying h-e-b sponsorship I say it's gonna bring out the sponsorships for everybody. Yes, sir. <laughs> I used to walk out Walmart. Fuck Walmart. Just saying. Fuck Walmart. I agree. I agree. Love y'all deli shit though. Bruh, they have the best chimichangas. They do? I've yeah. never tried it. They got some bomb ass ranch wings. I'm gonna be a bean. Ran- the yes. ranch wings. I've had one that oh man. I agree with you. Listen, if you don't fuck if you don't fuck with Walmart, it's cool. But if you ever go to that shit, Get some fucking ranch ones. It'll do you right. Anyways. I think I remember asking you what your favorite food was the last uh, SAS we had, and you said wings. I was definitely one of them. I definitely said <laughs> cow for a shirt, because I remember growing up, man, when I first got money, I had a part-time job, bro. I used to, Pizza Hut had this cow zone shit, and I used to order that bitch every fucking week, bro. Oh, Lord. But, yeah, cow zones were the shit for me, bro, growing back in the day, but... Like now, I'm just chilling. I don't really got a favorite food. I'm just, I'm just living life. I have just. You, um, ever been to Cece's? Yes. They have like this inside-out pizza, which they is do? basically like a calzone, because it's like the the uh, crust is on the outside, on the inside is the cheese, the sauce, and the pepperoni. I'm gonna need to look into that. No care. Okay. I'm gonna need to look into that. Cece's pizza. Cece's pizza. Hey, that might be the move. It changed my life. <laughs> that might be the move. Tomorrow, Cece's is trying to pull out. <laughs> Dude, that just sounds so good. Oh man, it was the best thing ever. It's <laughs> the best thing ever. Um, do you feel like there is anything currently holding you back? No, not a thing. He said no. I love that. Not a thing. Like at this point in my mind and in my heart and my soul, all three mm-hmm. are connected to the same goal. Mm-hmm. We gonna make it at the end of the day. No matter what. Before I used to care about people's opinions. I used to be scared. What if I don't make it to second guess myself? You know, back when I first like had my first Saturday Saturday, Saturday, you know, I was in a good place with confidence and now that confidence wasn't flawed, but at the same time it's now set in stone through my whole body. Like before it's like, you know, oh yeah, you know, just love everybody, everybody, everybody give it back. Now just like regardless if you love me or not love me, I'm gonna find my way through it. Mm. Interesting. Um, what's 
I'm gonna show love regardless because that's who I am. But you know, yeah. opinions don't matter to me no more. It just sounds like you have a lot of self love. Yeah, I'm building that. Uh, yeah. I like I'm starting to work out, like get built, uh, go shopping for myself. Like this whole journey on my way over here was just like you know, listening to music, just getting just in touch with myself. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Loving myself. Yeah. Who are you listening to? I'll listen to Boz with Coy uh Coil Ray and uh Trippy Red. Okay. That shit was fun. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> he got so excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't talk my language like what was that? A stomp. <laughs> that shit hard. Um so I know like you've been dropping like singles, kinda giving us a taste of this then yeah. the yeah, yeah. thirds. Like can we expect like an album from you or an E P? Uh possibly like a whole project. So I do got something in the works. I want to say that Broker Harbor Golden Stitches is definitely on the way. I've been pushing that off for so long, but it's just I wasn't mentally ready to drop such a big project. Mm-hmm. And now where I'm at mentally, financially, I'm still throwing shit around. Like I said, I'm not going to give it an exact date. My goal, original goal, is to drop it October 8th this year. Mm-hmm. But if need be, I will make sure that project is going to be perfect by all means to myself when I drop it so if it gets pushed back so be it but I promise that shit will get dropped by the end of this year oh yeah oh yeah that's awesome what are the steps that you take to to make an album like what does that look like for you um I actually just recently did this I have my bag with me and I have a curly top journal where a curly top journal yeah where I have all my <laughs> music you know planned out in a sense I have an EP that a rap EP that I want to work on Mm-hmm. with uh, different other artists like Craze he's a great rapper Calamari I want to get an actual rap song with him and so this is it it's a curly top journal it's an alien because we out of this world mm-hmm. so um, Summer Vibes that was planned out uh, the EP that I'm referring to I'm not guaranteeing when it will be like I said it's definitely in the thoughts and project of creation but it's called Talk But Don't Listen so far mm-hmm. and uh, first things first I always want to list how many songs I want on the album the cover art for the album and they know what kind of song I want like kind of songs are going to be on the album so far this is shaping up to be like very kind of rock and pop and hip hop emo break heartbreak kind of uh, album and um, I, w- I have like like maybe like five or six songs that I have that are not yet in here mm-hmm. so I'm still trying to figure those out but out of the 20 songs that are planning to be on the album I have about Maybe like five or six professors recorded already and the rest I have planned on certain dates to go to the studio to get that shit taken care of. That's amazing. Yeah. That is really awesome to hear yeah. about. I right. have like gotta keep pushing yourself mentally in what you want. Yeah. Never ever to anybody that watch this, even you, I'm pretty sure you get this though. When you find a goal, it will not happen automatically. You gotta make a plan to get there. If you don't, then you're just imagining it'll happen. It won't happen. You gotta plan that. So that's something that takes a lot of time. You push it back, that's okay. You can do that. Go by your pace, by your standards, by all means. It doesn't matter. You have to be happy and satisfied with your work, your creation. I really needed that. I just want to make sure. Like I said, I think you're doing, <laughs> you're doing great. You know the saying? universe provides. No, I definitely get it. Because you were asking me how school was going for me before we started all this. And yeah. I, I stopped. I was like, shit, like, it is going well. Right, like it's not not going well, but I have like this where my graduation keeps getting pushed back because I'm not understanding the content or I'm not like um, just getting it, you know. Take and your so time, like, but yeah, that's look what where you're at right now. You're at a place where you're self sustainable, mm-hmm. so you you're free to make creation of what you wanted to. Mm-hmm. You don't live nobody's rules but your own. Mm-hmm. You're strict with yourself to the point where you continue creating content, and on top of that, you're free to be creatively. To create however you want to see fit like you see this idea and you let it grow into nurture whatever it can be and will be to the most it, it can be mm-hmm. that's the most important thing to reach the most maximum potential you can yeah. thank you you're very welcome tell me what the story is in your own words behind your um behind with you like like what what made you who made you right so that if it if that's okay oh yeah for sure you know i'm saying i don't got much to hide i don't really my ex my mom and must be icy Mm -hmm. my ex left we broke up and she came back broke my heart again no that definitely woke up like some of me that wanted me to change something Mm -hmm. 
and um, I was really broken for a long time. Um, I'm still connecting my pieces. I'm still not 100%. You know, it's hard to find that when your edges are the different, that's a universe in your mind. Mm -hmm. You're always like, from your first love, you're always going to feel some kind of pain and heartbreak when you think about it. Yeah. And, um, you know, when I, you know, I'm, I'm healed to an extent where I feel free now, where I'm not chained by that. I don't have nightmares no more about it. And I don't feel dread hearing her name anymore. Mm -hmm. And memories, you know, they're not filled with anger anymore. Must be icy definitely helped along that path you know i was very drifting on what the fuck i want to do didn't know what life i wanted to live i was just planning on working not making music just work fuck bitches make money shit like that you know yeah, yeah. the typical the fuck heartbreak fuck boy nigga yeah yeah luckily i was saved from that <laughs> i am a happy person i found who i am what i am what i want to be mm -hmm. and um i went to this this seminar because I like educating myself on other things from one of my mentors his name is Lenny Wall Street or Lenny Walls my apologies his name is Lenny Walls he's a former NFL player the tallest quarterback in history and he definitely brought light into a world that was dark mm -hmm. I didn't know what I wanted to do I was second guessing myself at that time too and you know I didn't know how far I wanted to take this music this shit I make music kind of drop and continue my life now I'm all in this and that made me understand you're either all in or you're not. Mm -hmm. You can't be scared of 50 50. You can't do 50 50. That's not what's going to work. Mm -hmm. I know people that would make a song that'll blow up and they weren't expecting it. They weren't ready for it. Mm -hmm. And what you're going to do? It's like, you know, anything can happen in this world. Anything. Yeah. You can have a song when you accidentally moan in the background because you stubbed your toe. Like I said, and that song could blow up because of that specific thing. Right. Like, just like that. You don't know. It's yeah. just simple. Yeah. And. You know, once you take that opportunity to grow, you see anything is possible. Like, yeah, I can't stress that enough. Anything is possible to anybody who chooses and wants it to be. Work hard, work constantly, and never give up. Don't stop. That is the key word. Do not stop. That's what's going to get you there. Yeah. People are going to stop like 15, 20 years later if they don't reach it. If you work that extra one year, 21 years, you're 41, but you finally blow up with that one song. I don't think it should take that long, but shit, <laughs> that could be the one. Yeah. And think about all along the way, all the people you helped, people were willing to help you back. And, um, you know, there was a day when I was with my mom. This was like a key moment for me to solidify, like, motivation for me to go go hard. Don't stop. My mom would, and I, I, I was, she wasn't, she was living in a shelter at the time. I was living with my friend who I was paying rent, so, like, we kind of like roommates at the time. I was sleeping on the couch and the couch didn't have cushions. It was like just bare like sofa. Like mm -hmm. and the springs are like right there and I, and I wake up with the most painful back aches ever. Still pop my back like just the thought of it. Mm -hmm. And you know, my mom, she fell asleep there where I sleep. Cause she said she came by, made some food for everybody, cleaned up, and she passed out, you know, she was tired. She was out there driving Uber, Lyft, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And she fell asleep where I was sleeping. And everything just hit me so fast. My girlfriend, my ex-girlfriend was gone. I had no car no more. Um, my mom, we were homeless. We were homeless at the time. Got evicted. And it, it, it sat with me. And I did not sleep that night at all. It just made me realize, like, I don't want to feel this again. That feeling sticks with you for life. Yeah. So after that, I definitely wanted to change things. And that definitely made me stronger. Yeah. Sh strong as hell. And that makes me realize, like, you know, when I, when I, this, this is where that comes from, 100% in music, just never go back there again. Because mm. as long as I do that, there's going to be a day where mom can sleep on the queen size mattress that she deserves. On a big ass bed in a nice ass house. Or she, if she want to cook, she can cook. If she want to have somebody else cook, she can have that. She can be a happy queen or athlete or whatever the hell she want to be. She want to be a fucking... I don't fucking know. Whatever <laughs> she want to be, she can be that. That's, that's, that just woke me up to the reality of life. Like, anything... You have to change something. You have to give up something to get to where you want to be. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a Christian. I believe in God. So I read the Bible. 
you know so I was just that whole night I walked outside screaming like a guy like what the fuck you want me to do what the fuck do I do yeah. and he was like all right you gave me something yeah. go at it yeah. later on had my first show honey carry happened went to Miami um just a lot should happen after that yeah yeah, sorry. So no, deep. it's okay. That's <laughs> I, I want you to to feel as comfortable, you know. Yeah, as you like I, I to know. Be I ain't trying to kill the whole vibe. Show though. me, no. Show me, show me what makes curly top curly top. Because I know a lot of, um, not everybody is comfortable to really shed a light on the darkness that literally pushed us into the light that we are in now. You know, um, and I think it's important to recognize those those sorts of aspects in our lives because if we just ignore it. You know, one, we don't get to heal from it. You know, it'll always just be this bitter, like, angry part of our lives. You know what I mean? So I think it's very important to recognize that and, you know, see if there are still pieces that still hurt within that um, and then move on from there. Because, you know, there's healing will always, you know, will always be a big part of our lives. Um, and growing from that pain will always be a big part of our lives. Um, it's just whether or not we choose to heal and be better people and work harder to do the things that we want to do, you know, like, and I think that's really important. So that's really, yeah, that's awesome. Um, how do you express gratitude on a day to day basis? Um, I show by doing work, mm -hmm. uh, gratitude by doing something. Yeah. Uh, I feel like that's the most important thing to do is putting efforts or the thing that you're grateful for. I first of all thank God for the day, you know what I'm saying? Wake up, first one of the day when you make your bed, that's what you always do. Brush your teeth, wash your face. Y'all little dirty kids, don't be doing that. Make sure y'all wash your teeth. Don't be out here having cavities, be built like yellow. You don't want that. Mm -hmm. And um, do you have those things that you do and take care of yourself? You show yourself gratitude. You mm -hmm. say what you're gonna do and be happy and proud of yourself. I say it in the mirror like two to five times. If I can a day, if I remember, if I wake up early enough, you know, I'll go to the mirror and wash my face, brush my teeth, and be like, hey, don't forget that you're that person that's going to change the world. You're going to help a lot of people. You are confident. You are proud. You are successful. And make sure you continue showing that you, who you want to be is who you're going into be. Hmm. You got to speak that into existence. You got to work to that existence. Like. A lot of people complain about being ugly. Like, I, be honestly, people say, like, I'm cute. I, I, I be thinking I'm ugly. So I found, like, certain things that I can change to, you know, change the way I look. All right, Pierre, come off. I change how I dress. I change how I take care of my body, my face. You know, I'm still getting the hang of it. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get a haircut soon. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I didn't find the right person yet for the job. And um, to take care of yourself, I do, like, walks, gym. I work out, play basketball with my little brother. They have to give me to work. You know, you take care of your body, you take care of yourself, and you feel your self-esteem go up, confidence go up, and you feel more, you feel more beautiful inside, holes. You know? Like I said, I respect all religions. <laughs> Me personally, I'm not a homosexual. <laughs> just want to say that out loud. Um, <laughs> funny. Uh... How do you give back to the community? Uh, we just did, uh, me and Praise, the Hunter Carrier, just made a unity show that we just had. We got some money that we like a dollar to get into the show. And, and if you get five cans of food, you can, uh, all that was get you coming for free. You come five cans of food and we all donate to the food bank, you know, and that we donate half of the funds to the food bank, uh, to the food bank as well, or something like that. I don't know. We've definitely donated it though. And it was a big, big, just like, thing for me to know that we helped so many people it was such an amazing experience to know that we had like a table you've been happy place before right mm -hmm. yeah like little circle tables we had like so much canned goods that the table was overflowing and we had to put stuff under the table yeah. it was just that those things change like perspective on how you want to help the community you know i want to do we're planning on doing another show i ain't gonna say nothing yet because ain't nothing <laughs> solidified but we are planning another charitable show and i decided to know that you know, we help more people. That's the, like other artists that are not known. We help them get exposure. That's what we want. We want people to grow. People that who can't eat during the day, shit like that. We gonna help those people in the sense with that food. Like mm -hmm. this world, we gonna change it. You know, my my goal was like, oh, run San Antonio on the mindset, but now it's just to put San Antonio on the map. 
I didn't want to be that oh, the king of San Antonio, blah, 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 shit. I've never been like this type to want to boast and gloat and flex. That's not me. Right. Uh, you know, I have my moments. Don't get me wrong. I'm a little <laughs> big headed. It's a little bit. You know what I'm saying? For my confidence and not, yeah. you know, I care about other opinions. But, you know, my goal is to help everybody I can at the end of the day. Help this entire city. city. I want to help this entire city be one of the biggest, like, impacts on music. I want people to look at San Antonio and stop looking at like some fucking lame-ass city that nobody likes going to. Mm -hmm. I want our city to be known for a happy, successful time, not a gloomy-ass city that everybody goes to when they retire from the fucking military. <laughs> We're more than that, but like, that's what I want. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really cool. I am looking forward to see um, what more shows y'all put together. One, because they always, they are always probably one of the most well put put shows that I've seen. Got a show. Got shout out to Praise for that one. That yeah. Is, I'm, I'm just <laughs> Thank you, Praise. Thank you for everybody that pulled through. Thank you, Absent Genesis, Cash and Filler, Henry. You always, y'all be pulling through. I appreciate y'all. And uh, thank y'all, all artists that pulled through to the shows that perform. That it, it changes it, it changes the spectrum for the whole city. You mm -hmm. don't understand it, but we bring people. And we change, we change lives. You don't know if that's their first show that's gonna make them want to do this for real. Mm -hmm. And that person that's cheering, they're like, "Oh yeah, that shit hard." Just saying that one time, it solidified that for that person. You know, yeah. that, making memories for the community as a community, not just as your like yourselves, like as an artist, like yeah. for everybody. Just gotta enjoy these times, you know, that we have together. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll never know we have another COVID moment. We all gotta be locked up in the house again. So I just mm -hmm. wanna be thankful for the time we got. Mm -hmm. I understand. I get it. But also looking forward to see what other charitable shows that y'all put together too. Because yeah. I think that's a really great idea. That food can dry was was really nice. It was phenomenal. It was great. It was really good. Um, what does compromise in this field look like to you? Compromise. Yeah. So let's say you and someone else that you're working with have totally two different views on what the sound should be, on what the messages or whatever has that ever happened yeah a lot music? of times a lot of people don't like some people would like me some people don't some people say i miss some people say i'm fine some people say i'm ass you know everybody's got the opinion mm -hmm. my thing is you know it's when did you work when did you show your love to people like i said i love everybody that i fuck with music like uh horrible william just dropped this song called space girl right mm -hmm. that shit's fucking fire some people say it's not their cup of tea whatever but yeah that's just I listen to that shit on the way here. That shit is amazing. <laughs> like, everybody's got their own opinion on music, and it's cool. But it's mm -hmm. just, you show love regardless because that person is going out of their comfort zone to change the spectrum, to change their point of view in somebody else's mm -hmm. eyes. There's a lot of times I'll go to, like, Raider music, like, on the Hoax and Bakery tour, like, we did, like, earlier this year. You know, there's a lot of times people didn't fuck with my music, you know, because it's not a Rager song, it's not a Mosh Pit song, and mm -hmm. it happens, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. But that little bit of five to ten people, five, six people that actually come up to me after my set and say, I love your shit, you know, that shit, that, that's a compromise. Yeah. You, you show that love, showing love is a compromise, love is a compromise. Because it doesn't matter what borders you from, where you come from, where you be, you show love, you respect somebody from that. Because they came out of here, out of their way to do some. Originally, like every time that you a artist performs, it's always scary. You always feel nervous. They overcome that to do what they do, mm -hmm. and it's always a scary thing because you create something from nothing. First of all, then you got to hear people's opinions on it. Then you got to perform it and show your energy towards that song, regardless of what people say or do, and they react to you live. That is a terrifying thing. Mm -hmm. People don't see it as that sometimes. Like, yeah, right. I've seen some videos where Ice Spice did her little song thing and nobody reacted to that shit that she started twerking and everybody's going crazy like bro mm -hmm. you think that's 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 scary man yeah. you know the whole, whole world saying they listen to your music but when you're right there nobody fucking with you like mm -hmm. it's just scary yeah so compromise is showing love giving love respecting others just to be there you know what i'm saying you don't gotta like this shit sometimes it's okay you say hey it's not my cup of tea there's sometimes i hear some niggas talking about demon shit and like i said i'm a minute guy and like, <laughs> hey it's not my cup of tea but you know i love the fact that you're creating something that yeah. I'm sure you love just for that. Yeah, something that's for you. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, have you ever had stage fright or something like that where you were just Hell like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you look so confident time. when you're on stage. That's why, like, I had to ask, like, 
you know, I don't realize how scary that is because of how confident you guys look when you're on stage. It's like I said, well, my, it's just me personally. Okay, yeah. Uh, when I make it, when I go on a show, it's like, okay, uh, there's a 50% chance I just want to back off, say I'm sick or I got to go home. You know, there's always that looming thought in my mind to, you know, it's okay to go back, you know. But, you know, when I'm there, it's like, fuck it, I'm already here. Let's go all out. Just jump in that bitch. Just do it. Yeah. There's no point. And like I said, fear of the unknown is probably the biggest thing that holds a lot of people back because they mm. don't understand or they're not willing to try because they don't know what the result will be. Like, my last show at the Unity show, I did not have the best set. Um, my features uh, had to go and uh, my songs didn't sound the way I thought it would on the speakers and what I did for the night which is like my biggest me and Icy's biggest song let me make sure I change that <laughs> me and Icy's biggest song you know um, the lyrics weren't on it so I think I might have set the instrumental instead and it was not my best performance at all but you know people said that your energy carried the whole thing and yeah. that means a lot to me thank you to people who walked up and said that to me that meant the world to me because yeah. like I said like I would have bawled my eyes out after that because mm. I was just so heartbroken that I fucked up so much because like I said, this is everything to me, 100%, yeah. life or death, and sat there and just wallowed in it for like 20 minutes, I'm like, you know what, can't be a bitch, someone else said his own, let's go rock out some more. Yeah. yeah, that is um pretty terrifying, like you said, fear of the unknown, my thing is I have fear of success, you know how earlier we were talking about, like, you never know if that one song's gonna blow up, you know? He's like, I am, am prepared. I prepared, you Gotta know what I mean? <laughs> I'm saying, when you create something, you know it's good. Someone else is going to think it's good. Someone else is going to think it's good. Yeah. You know, like, uh, the San Pluto show was on yesterday, you know what I'm saying? There was like, I sent that shit to like, damn near a couple hundred people. Yeah. And I sent it to damn near everybody I could send it to. Yeah. And a lot of people that did pull up through that, thank you guys who voted. And, you know, even though I lost, those people said, yo, this is some great entertainment. I would love to be on this some more. And you know, that's more people that got subscribed, like who going to be genuinely a fan, not there because I'm there. Yeah. How did you get involved with that, by the way? Because I saw it and I was like, well, like this is this is something different. Yeah. Uh, so they had this thing they had mentioned the first time I was there. Quest had had like DM'd everybody on his like like podcast channel shit thing that he has. I'm not sure what it's called. It's like like the channel shits they got. Like when you go between requests and like general or yeah, like general there's like this one about like channels and shit where you can get added and whatnot and it talks about the San Pluto show I'm like okay let me check this out it's like a music review uh, show where you're sending your music and if you have some money you throw it their way they'll review it live they'll have a guest Quest was on it me and Quest are cool and you know they talked about this thing called the Crucible and they said based on the people you bring you know it's gonna be awesome you and somebody else bring like put a song in and they'll let the crowd choose who was better so I submitted for the night and you know, we won the first time around. Yeah. Yeah. And second time around I did uh remember when one of my songs that are gonna be for Broke Hour Go to Stitches and I did Psycho for the part two that we um I lost this second round the the finals, but it's okay. Pretty sure they're gonna bring me back because I know that a lot of my people out here I'm not I don't have fans, I have people that I love and that love me and you know, they hang out and fuck with my shit. So thank y'all. I don't believe I got fans. I don't got a fan base. I got people that I love and people that love me back. That's that. It's the real family. Hmm. I like that. I like that. The last time we talked, um, I remember asking you, like, when we can expect some curly merch. How's that? Is that still in the making? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, my goal is to have it drop by the end of the year as well. Okay. That's another thing that my big year goals. Mm -hmm. So I can't guarantee because, you know, if you, like, have anybody that knows designing, I'm trying to look into different designs and different concepts because I only have two right now and I just want to make sure I do something extra different and like I said I don't have nothing really trademarked just yet mm -hmm. so before I knock everything down I don't have a specific way that I want to do something I want to go all out if I'm going to go all in that's just how I am mm -hmm. is it um, like creating like a logo or something like that that it's really kind of like yeah I don't have a specific logo other than a little curly top name on my back and Broke Hour Going Stitches is like it's like an album, but it's not going to be the person that identifies, not the thing that identifies me. I'm trying to find my own kind of slogan in a way. Mm -hmm. Like, Juice World had 999. That's something that I want to create in my own sense that, mm -hmm. you know, shows good positivity and light. Mm -hmm. So, I'm trying to find that for myself. Yeah. I get it. I understand. I think that's also been one of my bigger struggles, you know, because it's like, I think making merch and you know stickers and all the sort of that or just like creating a brand for myself is really difficult because it's like how do I put 
all these things that I think that is me into one little picture that's gonna be my stamp. Well, that shit is fire. I'll be peeping. I I've seen it since like you had it. I, I think, I don't know if you made praise one or not, but I know you had one that looks similar and I just noticed both of y'all, they look similar, but it's just fire. The y'all sticker thing that y'all got is fucking phenomenal. No, oh, these? Yes. No, uh, Art by Halo made it. Art by Halo? Yeah, that's his uh, IG. I'm gonna need a DM, no cap. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, they're called Faux Heads, F-O-E-H-E-A-D-Z. Um, yeah, he made these and he made all of these. So it's like concept, um, South Side, and then that's Halo. But um, yeah, Art by Halo, I'll send you his, his IG. Thank you. And then I'll put it in underneath as well. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, he, he made these. And so like, I don't mind using his lo this as my logo. Like right now, it's just kind of like my profile picture, but I want something for because I you know I have Swayze Sky's production, I have SAS and shit like that. So yeah, like different things, just trying to find something that can like put that all into it. Mhm. Mm yeah, but it's hard because I change all the time. You hey, know? that's the thing that I know. <laughs> I heard you have like a little TV channel thing that works too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I work with um with the streaming service. I'm uh, one of the editors for that streaming service, awesome. and um, pretty much what we do is we you know go to shows. We talk with authors, motivational speakers, um, poets, um, and basically are trying to create a or are creating a streaming service for the community. I know my mentor is also a motivational speaker and okay. they have a whole group so I can definitely send you his Instagram or yeah. his contact and to get you connected. He's yeah. a very, very well, uh, well off uh, man, he's very well known too and you know he's very successful and uh, me and him have been working with each other for like a year so yeah. um, we, have, we have this thing called, uh, we have Mastermind so we read like certain educational books and we'll have discussions on it and how we'll grow from there. And it's very fun. I haven't been there in like the last couple months because I've been so like focused on myself and I felt like I need to take a break from all the all that power I just had. I just didn't have nothing to do with it. And I need to mm -hmm. live life a little bit to, you know, understand where I could use this at. Now that I'm at a point where I see certain things differently, mm -hmm. I can implement things mm -hmm. differently as well. Yeah. I love that. Do you like to cook? So, <laughs> I'm not, I can cook, I can cook, I can cook, but my favorite thing is baking, I like making sweets. You like baking? Yes, uh, me and my brother, my brother thinks he's like some fucking Gordon Ramsay dude, mm. and then he was like, okay, let's let's uh, have a bake-off, and I was like, yeah, let's bake-off. We I bought two boxes of brownies, and we, we had a brownie contest, I fucking want that. <laughs> Josh, take an L, I put this out live. Put this all in there. <laughs> I can't bake for shit. I've burnt cookies so many times. Wow. Like, like, <laughs> I don't know. Huh. I don't. I've never been successful. Huh. One day I'm just come over here with a batch of cookies. Like, I'm gonna show you how to bake these. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you have. You get the you get the ones in the, in the little pack because like my, growing up, my mom had like the little ones that like already made a little yellow like chocolate uh, chocolate chip lovers on. Like, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. in there, and, and the thing is, you gotta pull it out when it's hot, and you gotta let it cool. Mm -hmm. And that shit is what what it comes from. If you like soft cookies, you gotta pull them off when they're like somewhat warm, but you gotta give them a little, little bit of time to cool. It just depends on how how soon you pick them up. And let me tell you, I made me a batch of cookies. I just when I'm home by myself, <laughs> absolutely, I got me a batch of cookies. I'm throwing that shit in the oven. That's so funny. I think I have, I think I had cookies. No, I don't have cookies. I bought cinnamon rolls. Totally different. But, like, I'm always scared to, like, make them because I was, like, bro, like, that one time of making cookies really scarred me for, like, because I was, like, I was, like, it's not, it's not even done yet, and so I left it in there way too long, and then by the time it came out, they were, like, rock hard, and I was, like. Mm. Yeah, so that's, that's the secret. You take out the cookies. When they smell the best, mm -hmm. take them out, because mm. you hook, you hook, they hit your nose, they mm, cookies, like, they'll have that cookie smell. <laughs> they'll have that straight up, oh, I'm ready to be eating smell. You take them out there, you can put them in the fridge for five minutes. You can leave them out for like 15, 10. Mm -hmm. Boom. Cookies are phenomenal. I always love, I'm a cookie with milk guy, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I dump my Oreos and I leave them in there. I let them soak a little bit. That's the kind of guy I am. I love me some Oreos. I love cookies and milk. That's my thing. That's my little, that's my, that's my pleasure, my midnight, my little finish pleasure right there. I have this, like, I have this guilty pleasure for s'mores. 
Mm-hmm. And I found these on, 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 on Instagram, a reel on Instagram. I'll have to send it to you. But it's like, so you make a s'more, right? The graham cracker, the chocolate, the marshmallow. And then you put cookie dough over it. Cookie dough over it. And then you bake it. And so when it comes out, you break it in half. You know, it's the cookie on the outside. And then the s'more is like all melted in the middle like bro that shit got me mesmerized I need that for <laughs> sure I'm gonna send you the real it was yeah, like my birthday is in December so I'm like a, I'm used to like in the cold season and it's my favorite time to bake it's around my birthday time or like when it's super cold like mm-hmm. soon it's like uh spooky season hit like we, we've kind of spooky season no spooky season hit when it get cold outside that's fair yeah, if like, it gets cold outside no it will there's this thing i noticed for years <laughs> about october whatever okay. like, like the day before the date of ho- of fucking halloween mm-hmm. it gets cold as shit i've always noticed it and it's always bugged me because i've noticed it for years now i remember when i was like 16 and yeah. i was like going to like some like football workout and i'm like oh yeah it's gonna be warm outside it's gonna feel good and it's fucking cold as shit. I'm over here with fucking shorts and a shirt and a helmet on my head. And I'm running back and forth in the field. I'm like, why the fuck is so cold? Like someone touched my back and I was ready to box them. I'm like, don't touch me when I'm cold and wet. I don't feel nice. And then I'm like, okay. And then around that time again, ne- next year, I'm like, didn't it get cold on Halloween last year? And I just noticed it. I don't know why I noticed it. I just did. I'm going to have to pay attention this year because I was like, I feel like I've had days where I'm just like, it's just way too hot and it's Halloween or maybe that's just during the day. I've never seen Does it get cold at night? Is that what it is? Or it's just like... It could be. It could be. Yeah. But I've definitely noticed that fucking coldness. Like, it just bothers me. So I think I was like in like a costume once because I like... uh, I'm a spooky season person. Like, I... I'm telling you, bro. I, we're going to Comic Con and anime cosplays together. It, that, that, I'm like that for real. Like, I'm coming in as a touch. You can be whatever you want. I'm looking clean with some Sharingan contacts. Besides <laughs> the point, like I said, just want to say I'm a weeb. Kind of threw it out there. It is what it is. Like it, love it, or don't. Cool. But mm. like, I love spooky season. Spooky season, you, you get all dressed up for. It. It's the only reason why I get to say I'm a grown man dressing up in a different grown man's cost, like different grown man. Like I can say that and not be judged. I love it. It's awesome. <laughs> if I look like Dwayne the Fat Johnson, I can. Yeah. <laughs> I love Halloween. This is gonna be the first year that I'll have like a matching costume with someone because me and Bidu are gonna be matching ghosts. Oh snap. Oh, that's her name, because I thought it was B, though. <laughs> or B of B. Yeah. Okay, okay. Because in my head, um, like, when I saw that, I kind of, like, she had, like, a bright kind of color. Like, I looked all through her post, and, like, I follow her and whatnot. Mm-hmm. She was, I looked at her, and she's cool. She's a rapper. She's nice. And, like, she had, like, this bright kind of, like, aura to her. And, like, I peeped it. And when I heard Bido, I saw Bido, I, like, I like Bido, like, the fucking minion. From, like, oh, Despicable yeah. Means 2. Yeah, uh, that's, what my, that's how my mom pronounces her name. I was like, it's not Bido, yeah. it's Bido, yeah. My bad. I'm it's sorry. Okay. <laughs> don't, don't diss me. <laughs> she's going to watch this and be like, curly top. <laughs> uh, it's twisty top now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just get a whole new identity. <laughs> Put it on all the merch. Yeah. Twisty season. Twisty. Oh, man, that's kind of Dang, hard. that's hard as shit. I know what I'm saying, bro. I'm going to keep it on the right now, now. That's twisty season today, baby. Oh, Lord. Uh, All right. That's hard as shit. <laughs> Put that down. Somebody write that down quickly. I don't know how long I'm gonna have these twists. I've been sleeping, but my fucking do rag disappeared, so I don't know how long oh, it's gonna no. last. Oh, that's funny. Oh, that reminds me. I need to go to the. I need to go to Sally's after this. I'm gonna dye my hair. Oh, what color? I'm trying to go all black. All black? Yeah. I just dyed it pink. It's like bleach. It's like rose pink, like rose, rose gold pink. Yeah. But I was supposed like like a little darker, but hey, no, it's cool regardless. I just wanted to do something very like specifically different that stands out to me. I've not seen a man masculinely pull out pink. You know what I'm saying? I think I can do it. No. <laughs> like I said, I'm not gay. Just want to say that again. I mean, I know that Icy's watching that shit and he's saying pause and like every five seconds I say some <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh man. If you can be anywhere right now, where would you be? Like, what would you want your view to be? My view to be? Yeah. Japan. Oh, yeah, Japan. Uh, Tokyo Tower, Japan. Yeah. You like sushi? Yes. Somewhat. I, 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 I look to the left a little bit. I look to the left. I have to think about it because, yeah, like, 
Growing That's up. That's what I think about when I hear uh, Japan. Like growing up, I was not a fan of sushi, but you know, after trying it, after there's so many different types of sushi. Mm, I remember yes. this is hot Cheeto sushi that I tried. Yes. She was, you know what I'm talking I about. I do. That's one of my favorites. That shit's fire. <laughs> that shit is fire. That shit's so good. Well, you know what I did have the other day? I had this one sushi roll, and it was kind of like, um, I think it had like, you know, like avocado cream cheese in it, just like a regular sushi roll. That shit's fire. But on the top of it, it had like a strawberry jam. Was it good? It was amazing. Bro, bro had the fucking Krabby Patty with the jelly on that yes, shit. Yes, that's that exactly crazy. what that shit was. Bro, I was like, strawberry. Yo, that was crazy. She really came up with a concoction. Did you do that with like somewhere? No, I went, we, uh, me and my friend went out to eat. She wanted sushi and I was like, okay, like, let's just, you know, let's just go wherever, you know. So we went to this one spot and, um, she like ordered this she's like doesn't this look good she was like oh strawberries that sounds cool you know and then i didn't even it didn't click in my head that we were eating sushi right even though we were ordering sushi it didn't click in my head that i read strawberry in the sushi roll like description Together. yeah and so then it came out and it was like this jam and, like just dripped over it and so like i took a bite and i was like what the fuck? Bruh, like when you said that <laughs> instantly thought about that fucking crusty crab <laughs> uh, the fucking crabby patty with the jellyfish the jelly, jelly, that bitch. jelly yeah that shit must that's I'm gonna be a bean. I will try that shit. That shit look fire as hell. I'm gonna put a burger on that bitch. And then put jelly on it. You know, I've never thought to try it. But, and I've been a huge SpongeBob fan. Bro, you should try that at Burger Boy. Because Burger Boy be slapping. Burger Boy has like, it, it tastes like homemade burgers. Yes. When you taste like, like some burgers from like McDonald's, you can tell it's like processed meat or, you know, meat that came from somewhere else. They burgers be tasting like that shit came off the grill. Like you from home. Throw some jelly in that bitch, bro. Hey all you people. Hey, hey all, all you people. people. Hey all you people, <laughs> will you listen to me? That's going in the promo. Hell yeah. <laughs> Those some all the time. No, I'm just kidding. Fuck, I don't need all the time. I don't need it with my shows. You mm. fine. You want to throw out any shout outs? Uh, shout out Must Be Icy, even though I said it like 50 times. 50 times Must Be Icy. Uh, shout out Epic Records. I got a call from them the other day. You know, okay. Epic oh. Records. It's an interesting conversation, but you know, yes, thank you for the opportunity. So, that, thank you to them. Thank y'all. Shout out to AR. Shout out to Katana. Shout out to Protocol, Vision, Baby, Hobo William. Shout out Honey Carrot, K Dollar. Shout out Praise. I'm not sure I said that, but I'm going to say it again. Shout out Praise. Say three <laughs> times, but big time is better than one. And, you know, shout out to all my people that fuck with my music. Thank y'all so much. Y'all make this all worth it in the end. You know, it's, it's a very difficult road that every artist has to go through. So when y'all people play that like, share that song, press, comment, that shit means the world to an artist. You share that one person to one more person. You make us feel like we're fucking celebrities, I swear. I be feeling like I'm fucking Drake sometimes. But like I said... Well, I'm, 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 I'm humble with my shit. I just want to be like, say, I'm, I'm nowhere near as great as the rest of you. I'm not great just yet, but I know I will achieve there someday. Hell uh, yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you for joining me. This yeah, is, it was a pleasure. This has been a lot of fun. This was, it was awesome. Can we make s'mores cookies sometime? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we even got to ask, right? Like, hey, Craig, are you free today? Yeah, s'mores cookie day. S'more cookie day. Let me know. <laughs> Let me know. Oh, yeah. I'll bring a gallon of milk. <clears throat> That I smack on that with milk. Love milk. milk. Are yeah, you a 2%er? Two percent. I drink both. It don't matter. You know? I'm, a big, <laughs> I'm a big boy. It don't matter. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a very like big, like based on like from like working out. Like I don't I don't look like it, but I'm pretty kind of I'm kind of heavy actually. I, I'm built like damn near close to. Never mind. I'm gonna say that out loud. <laughs> y'all thought y'all was gonna get the weight of curly tie. You're just gonna have to find out when I jump on y'all when I do a crowd surf. Yeah, but no, nah, that I, I'll be like from working out when I was younger. I used to drink yeah. tons of milk. <laughs> That's just so hard. Because nah, I'll be like, when I be making like pancake, like I said, I'm a baker. I like making sucks. sweet shit. Like anything that's sweet, I like making. I have this thing, like, I, like I said, I watch YouTube and shit, and video game players and shit like that. I'm finna add that to my repertoire sooner, someday, later. Yeah. Everybody listening, besides the point, you know, I saw this video, somebody making something called Oreo lasagna. Basically, you put Oreos as a base, right? And okay. you put vanilla pudding and stack it with Oreos. And then vanilla pudding and yeah. stack it again with Oreos. And then the top of the Oreos, you put whipped cream, like the like the, like the the little like quick whip whipped cream. Yeah, yeah. And you put it with the, the mixing with the Oreos in it. I'm like, yo, put that shit in your fridge for like 10 minutes. That shit is soft. And you'd be like, yo, what the fuck? I remember one time I made that for my dad's birthday. My dad was like, yo, 
That shit fire from that ear to ear. That shit sounds good. Yeah, I'll make it for you. Sometime. You said lasagna threw me off because I hate lasagna. Oh. Like I will. I re- there's two things, two types of foods that are just two foods in general that I will not eat. I won't touch it. Lasagna and uh, meatloaf. Ah. Uh, I shit. won't. I won't. I won't do it. I won't touch it. It's just not. Mm-mm. I ain't even never been a picky eater. I just don't like fucking green beans. I, I, I never. You don't like up. green beans. I don't like my greens. Okay, I'm gonna be a bean. I'm still a kid at heart, okay? I'm still a kid at heart. I love, I love my sweets. Broccoli's cool. Broccoli with cheese was fire. Broccoli cheese. You're was not fire. wrong there. Okay. Broccoli cheese was fire. Yeah. Any, uh, any other vegetables you want to throw in the mix? Uh, cauliflower. Cauliflower. How Brussels sprouts. With that? Brussels sprouts. Wait, you say mixed feelings about cauliflower? Cauliflower would be dope. You also sometimes. Oh, it's I love it's cauliflower. Like steam ca- steam cauliflower is fire. Oh, no. No, you gotta like you have to like grill it. You can grill cauliflower. I have to ask my mom. Cook. Not, not sure y'all niggas know. Shit, my bad. I ain't used to the N word that bad. <laughs> but Mama Top is a chef too. Uh, she's she? at culinary school, so Mama Top can cook. I knew she could sing. I didn't know she could cook. Oh, Mama Top, yeah. She's Mama Top, be, Mama Top is an ace of all trades. I love that about her. Yeah, Mama know. Top is everything. You need some design, she can probably know somebody. She needs something quick. Like, my Mama Top could be a fucking vendor if she wanted to, but she just don't got a platform. And plus, she's too busy nowadays. Mm. Oh. Mama Top's cooking spot though. Yeah. She made a whole barbecue for like 15 people by her damn self. Mm. That's a lot of people. I have mixed feelings about barbecue. Depends on what you're getting, who's cooking it. That's, yeah, you're not, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. I work for a barbecue joint right now. And uh, they have a brisket grilled cheese that is to die for. Brisket grilled cheese. I need to know your location at your job. Like, <laughs> that shit sounds phenomenal. Come see me at work sometimes. I got you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I used to work at Bill Miller's. That's a, another little snippet. I just I had Bill Miller's today. Really? Yeah, look at this shit. The Bill Miller tea cup. Oh, the Laguna, uh, Laguna Agua. Look, shit. Laguna Madre. Yes, bro. Yeah, Laguna that one. Madre, yeah. I you had their, their seafood's good. And I just don't like Bill Miller's in general. Uh, I love, oh, is that because you work there? Oh, no, I'm talking, the food is, food. Okay. depends on where you go. Depends okay. on where you go. But mother food could be good depending on where you're at. Uh, like, there's this, let me put you on real quick. Okay. So, you, you go to them, and you like chili, you like, you like fries, you like chili cheese fries? Mm-hmm. So, you get chopped, chopped brisket with a large fry, and tell them to put cheese on it. <coughs> that shit is fire. I never thought to put brisket on, like, chili cheese fries, or just fries in general. Yeah, bro. You can uh, you can also do brisket bean and cheese. That shit's fire too. Brisket bean and cheese. Mm. That shit is fire. The brisket fries are- nachos. If you have brisket nachos, oh, well, yeah. if you have good like good queso, your nacho chips, and you throw fresh brisket on that. Yeah, me. Like- I, I'm a nacho like I am a nacho fanatic. Are you? Yes. So <laughs> how I eat my nachos is fucking weird shit. When I eat nachos, right? I have this thing where I put a shitload of sour cream in that bitch with like a bean and cheese, uh, brisket or chicken fajita. And I'll mix it, and it'll look like a fucking, like, white, f- what the fuck. And I'll eat that shit with a spoon. Like, oh, Do you oh. break up the chips? And yes. Just... Yes. And I'll eat it just like that. Oh, like a spoon. That's smart. I never thought to just... When you when you, when you a big homie like me, you think of different ways to eat shit. I'm going to be a bean with you. That's <laughs> okay, I really love sour cream, so that makes sense. Oh, yeah. I love, I love sour cream. I don't cream. know what it is. But I don't eat it often, right? Because it's, I don't... If, I'm made, if, if I'm eating Mexican food, you damn well sure I'm going to have some sour cream right about me. <laughs> I got, I can't like when I when I know I have some like Mexican food I always get sour cream with it like if I'm getting a nacho I'm getting sour cream right? mm-hmm. like my favorite spot to go to for nachos mm-hmm. is um Mama Margie's shit fire Mama Margie's shit is home yeah, Mexican and then there's this one thing called Fajita Express they I don't know if you know them or not but they, mm-hmm. they, they shit if you get the good shit you be like I want some um the, the fajita cheese the fajita bean and cheese that shit is doused in free fried and cheese yo. Because, like, people be like, oh, we, we refried the cheese. It's like, you know, it's kind of there, kind of not there. No, he doused that bitch. And that's exactly I what I need. I need a lot of cheese. Yo. I need a lot of cheese. I, love, I need me a lot of refried on that shit. Like, I'll throw the cheese on top and then the chicken fajita, then I'll put the sour cream in that bitch. I never thought about mixing my fucking match. That's what I'm going to have to do the next time I'm not Yeah, play that shit's all right, bro. I'll use, like, a little, I'll have, like, a little cup. Like, I, my, my little brother has seen me devour a fucking large shit, like a large, like, you know, like the whole shit of nachos, you just open up, it's like a nacho, I've devoured the whole shit by myself, like, just by myself. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll have, like, fairy tale in the background, like I said, I'm a weep, just saying, besides the point. 
I know someone's gonna make fun of me. <laughs> I know somewhere <laughs> in the world, like ah, I'm in a ravine. You know, I meet a lot, and so I've I've met uh, quite a bit of people, and most of them are just like you. My people. They they really are. You know what I mean? I can't really say that I'm a big fan of anime. Yeah. It's okay. You know, yeah, like I, I've watched a few. And you gotta find like, the right shit to get you into it. My personal favorite yeah. is called Erase the Time Without Me. That's my personal favorite because mm-hmm. it's a mysterious. A lot of animes nowadays, you don't really know what's gonna have. There's a lot of like, um, what's the right word? What's the right about it? There's a lot of fan pleasure mm-hmm. in anime. Yeah, yeah there's, a, there's quite a bit of that. But, but you know, it depends on what you're watching. You can find scary animes where. You can see people die gruesome deaths, like straight up blood, eye socket being peeled off and torture. Like, yeah. see something like that, or you can see somebody grow from the character that they are to grow into something amazing. You know, mm-hmm. I've, my first anime that I really watched was Naruto, so that's a special place in my heart. That's like definitely a big factor of why I changed from a quiet, you know, sad, you know, mad kid to a person that you know wanted to change the world. That definitely holds it strong place instead of my B as a person mm-hmm. that's that anime like there's a song that played it's called Win by Akaboshi like I know the song because I listened to it and studied like you know Japanese and like I said I'm a real I'm a legit weeb like we say Japan we gonna make it out of Japan <laughs> I'm having a show in Japan one day they'll call me an idol for a guy I don't know what the shit that's called but shit I'm gonna do it all yeah that's it I think I've, the only one I've seen like fully was uh, Shaman King Shaman King uh huh I don't think about that because it sounds familiar. So it sounds like I, I, I think it's on my watch list, but I don't think I've seen it. Yeah, I've watched, yeah, Netflix. You I've, gotta... I've watched like thousands, thousands of that. Yeah, I've seen. I think I've seen like maybe like um, like bits and pieces of like Yu Gi Oh, and then I liked it but couldn't really get into the series. And then like same thing with like um, oh, I can't even think of the name. I don't even think I know names like that. What's your favorite like? Hmm genre of like shows movies like what's your favorite genre um i'll be honest pretty pretty much anything with zombies i've probably seen most of the zombie movies like uh, let's say like i love zombies like like to the like my little scene kid name like my my myspace like all that shit was love all zombies my shit's called fan service sorry my head (laughs) i was still looking for that word called fan service not fan pleasure it's called fan service but besides the point yeah um i know there's there's quite a bit of some zombies uh zombie shows out there some anime animes mm. uh this this high school of the dead it has some fan um a little bit of some fan service but at the same time it's a good story plot yeah fighting the death you see people betraying people fighting dying death driving into shits mm. happiness for five seconds and zombies attacking there's zombie 100 zombie 100 where a person is re re Revigorated because knowing that they're born the life that they lived is changed because there's so many zombies around. It's called Zombie 100, if I'm correct. Uh, there's is this a zombie where this guy dies and he, he gets necromancy back to life from a necromancer and he becomes a zombie and he lives his life every day as a zombie. Mm. And it has some fans there, it's funny as shit, and you see it's a lot of actions. Like I said, I know a lot of shit about it. <laughs> I've like, never I'm heard a, anyone tell me that there was an actual category for zombies. And yeah, it's I, probably gonna be under supernatural. Huh. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to do that because I I love I love zombie everything. You know, I've seen I've seen most of like all on Netflix. Any type in zombie, I've seen all of them. I've seen all of them. Um, it's be interesting to put you. Yeah. On. <laughs> like I'm thinking about oh, this. Like there's so many different like variations of zombie. There's undead. There's like ghouls. Like Tokyo Ghoul is not a zombie movie per se, but it's definitely have a lot of like they're undead and to the point where they're powerful, mm-hmm. they fight each other, and it's uh, torture scenes, very passionate. A lot of times you're like, what the fuck is going on? They'll explain what the fuck is going on. It's, it's a beautiful. <laughs> I mean, it'll definitely if you're if you get attached to shows, yeah. Like me, I get attached to shows. Like if I see one a character die and they they talked about that shit for more than two episodes, yeah, probably gonna tear up a little bit. No, I get it. I yeah. get it. There's this one show that I watched. And um, it's like the kingdom, I think, and it's like like I guess live action. It's not like an animated or anything like that. But there was this one scene where I thought they had killed one of the guys that I was just like completely in awe about because he was just kicking ass. 
And um, you say in love, I ain't gonna judge. He could be in love with the bar. I was, I was for a little bit, and then like I had to wait a couple episodes to find out that he, he didn't die, and I was like, okay, no. I think I'm, I think I'll be alright. And then um, I had finished the series, and I'm still waiting for the third series to come out, and I'm, I'm still, I That's still a real have. Fan. She's I, a real fan. I'm like, <laughs> she's waiting for the third series. I don't know how people can say they wait. They waited for all three. Like you wait for the first season, and you're, all right, cool. Second season, damn, it's taking a long time. Third season, all right, I'm out. No, she said I'm still in this bitch. No, I'm still. I watched all like because there was like movies that were in that like in um like in that world, you know. So like the same people who made that TV series They'll have, like, also spinoffs of movies. And shit? Also had spinoffs with movies Ooh. within that world. Same like thing. It's just like different stories within different it. That's that? all gonna lead to the third fucking Ooh. series. Yo, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I've never been a good. I've never been good with that because like knowing there's like a movie out for like a show that I've watched like, mm-hmm. like I said, this like Dragon Ball. I've watched all the Dragon Ball from the original to Super. Yeah. There's like a, like a whole world phenomenon of how amazing it is. Mm-hmm. There's so many different movies. Like I never caught. I never kept up with all the movies growing up. Mm-hmm. There's so many Dragon Ball movies. See, I don't understand. There's so many like movies that like are good that like. You'll be so if you look up Dragon Ball movies, you'll be surprised about how many there is. How many? There's like fucking damn near. Probably more than ten. There's uh the Broly, the Battle of the Gods, the Frieza Saga movie. Uh, there's like there's like six from Kid Goku, and there, like I said, a very well known. <laughs> I'm just sweeping out right now. Uh, there's a couple in Z where uh they talk about Gohan. That's a uh, Goku's son, the main character's son, and how he grows into a young man and protagonist, and while his dead because his father's dead at the time, and yeah, so there's a lot. It's a lot of it. It's a lot of shit. Oh, there's not even talk about the, the the Dragon Ball movie with fucking Gohan in it. I don't even know what that was called. The Dragon Ball Superhero, I think it was called. Dragon Ball Superhero. It's where uh, the young the son's protagonist, uh, pr- pr- the the protagonist's son, gets a huge power up and becomes like that person that's super strong again. Because originally in the original series in Z, he was the strongest character because his son, his father trained him that way. Mm-hmm. So he becomes that person again. It's, it's awesome. Like I said, I just know a lot about shit. It's are these weird. all like spinoffs, or they're just like they're all in the same universe, the same characters? They just hold the same people. They just mm. uh, the cast of Dragon Ball. You get connected to, especially from like the original series. Mm-hmm. That was like fucking like in the nineteen set, like nineteen nineties, nineteen eighties. From that point on, uh, characters are still the same. Different voice actors, you can tell, and you know it just kind of revolves about where stories, villains. Mm-hmm. people who are there and as time goes on you see people from way back when you ain't see in five ten years just pop up out of nowhere like that's crazy a lot of shit yeah there's a lot of characters you don't got to keep track of all of them but you'll see them so much so often there's always a group there's never just one person living a long life it's always a group of people mm. yeah. i feel like this is probably the best interview i've ever gonna have this is awesome yeah like this is definitely phenomenal i like, think not having it live definitely released a lot of pressure from it and has helped it flow better. That makes sense. Oh yeah, for sure. I was definitely nervous being in that mall doing this shit. Yeah, especially when we got kicked out after. Bro, this. the fucking security guard. This is it. Just let y'all know. So why we didn't finish the first one? It's because the fucking security nigga kicked us out. But that's a wrap. That's a wrap. All right, y'all. My name is Kelly Top. You can find me on all platforms. And uh, for the night music video just released like last week, August fifth, August fifteenth. I love you guys. Uh, subscribe, like, and Kelly Top. Call me never young, broke a pants up. Take a stat line, triple double, that's his eyeball. Russell Westbrook. Bitch, we hotter than I thought I'd make it ice spice. Bitch, we hotter than fucking a bitch tough for the night. Me and Icy fucking tins, bitch, that's a double dime. Bitch, I'm so hot, make ice spice hot on a December night. Niggas can't fuck with me. Like, I got a baby mama drama, then she threatened to take your child alone. Oh, shit, know what that means. She finna take your ass to court, then take all your money for that fucking child support.